today's video I'm going to be showing you how to make your lights look as good yep so stay tuned and you want to do this in a good ventilated area I'm doing this on my kitchen table and with a window crack do as I say not as I do always be safe fumes are dangerous but that being said let's get started this is basically uh, come off my uh, F350 Super Duty if you've seen it in previous videos they actually aged and faded, so we're going to take some of this all-in-one cryon fusion. It's pretty good paint for this. You can use any kind of paint you want, automotive, you know, paint or just duplicate, anything, you know, anything you want to paint it with. It's all basically the same steps. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, clean these up, and the best thing to clean them with is just alcohol and water. I got a spray bottle here. It's pink. It does got alcohol and water. And we're just going to spray all these down and wipe them off. You can use Windex. Or you can use spray away. You can use a wax and grease remover. You can wash them in on this liquid. But if you got your tail lights in them, do not over spray them with water. Even though they are waterproof, could damage them. This style tile lights kind of just pop in. As you can see we got a thing it flat on you just take and just press them out a little by little. Just like so. And that lip will come out. This lip right here guys and the tail light will pop on out. So let's see if I can do it. Just like so. Now you always want to take pictures and mark how your tail lights go. You can see we got one yellow and one red on each side. You need to put them back the same way. So now we got that one out. We can take and remove the bezel, which is right here. It just pops out the same way. And that's basically how you take these guys apart. Now I'm going to finish taking them apart and then we uh, get to painting this one. Now that we got both of the lights out, we can clean this up better. And now, if you ain't confident at removing your tail lights on this style housing, you can mask around them, but it gives you a much better look if you do it this way. Let's go ahead and clean this up. Now you want it clean before you uh, start sanding on it or scuffing it, because you don't want no scratches that your paint can't fill up. I mean, from a distance you won't notice it, but... You know, you, you're going through this much trouble, you want it to look halfway decent. So this is just a red scotch black. It's just uh, one you can pick up at AutoZone or any paint store. You know, it's the they make these in a different few glitz. This is the red. It's fine. And uh, it's good for when you want to prep something that you don't want a lot of scratches to. So let's go ahead, since we got it all clean, and scuff this up. You will be able to tell what spots you scuff. As you can see, we got a scuff here. It's glossy here. We can just scuff the whole thing up and then go from the, the back side. It's just as much as important as the front, even though you ain't going to be seeing it. Now that we got this section all done, you can take and wipe it off one more good time. If you're dealing with bare metal, do not touch it with your hands because your hands got grease on it. Use gloves. I didn't got this prepped and I'm not going to touch it anymore, so we should be good. Going to take a Kron Fusion, and we're going to take and uh, pretty well follow the instructions. Now, since I done got this prepped, I'm going to touch it on the inside here and just flip this over. I want to paint the back side first. Because I'm painting this flat, if you got it hanging up, you can paint both sides at the exact same time. But I'm painting my back first and going to let it dry and then go from there. So you want the first coat to be kind of light. It's kind of a tack coat. And let's just go ahead and spray this. Just like so. I'm just going to do two coats on the back and then the, the front I probably do three coats this cryon fusion all in one covers great it's got your paint and primer in it that's why I like using it 
It's pretty good UV protection too, especially on something like this. This is the product, guys. This is actually with a quick coat under it. It does got a little dust in it, but this is the back. I ain't too worried about the back. But we're going to take extra care on the front. So let's go ahead and flip it over. You can see this ain't been painted. And this ain't been painted. So we're going to do the proper flash times. I let this dry for an hour. Uh, I put the coats between every 10 minutes. I put two coats of the Fusion. And then uh, I waited at least 40 to an hour and put a coat of quick coat on it. Two coats and uh, 10 minutes between each coat. And then I let it dry for an hour and it's pretty well dry to the touch. So let's go ahead and set this down here. Just like so. So y'all can watch me paint it. And uh, we go ahead and get us some Fusion. Right here and make sure the can is shook up before you spray. I done shook this can, so go ahead and spray a light coat. And before you do this, you want to make sure there ain't no dirt in this. Because if they are, it'll make it look bad. And as you can see, there ain't much dirt at all in this, if any. So I'm going to let this first coat tack for 10 minutes. Come back in here and spray a second coat. As you can see guys, we have let this dry for 10 minutes. We're going to go ahead and apply another coat after we shook a can up. Just make sure it's a nice even coat. And get all your edges. And it looks good to me. All the edges is good. Now, we're going to let this dry for about an hour to 30 40 minutes to it's you know dry to the touch and then we're going to apply some clear coat on it now if you don't want to use clear coat uh you can pretty well just let this dry and you'll be good to go but i'm going to put a durable clear coat on this as this is mate black and i want it as well so i'm going to apply some clear coat over top of this so let's go ahead and let this dry now this is the finished product. If you wanted to leave it like this, you could. It's a mate black. It's dry. It's been drying for an hour. It's nice and even. They ain't hardly any dirt in it. But we're going to put a coat of clear coat on it. And the clear coat I'm using today ain't no big expensive one. You can get it at Walmart and places like that. This is the brand. And uh, now with this dry to hour, it's dry to the touch. We can go ahead and apply this. Now I'm going to apply probably two to three coats of this, probably two, and uh, I'm going to apply this and then wait about 15 to 20 minutes and put my second coat on it. So let's go ahead and put the first coat on it, and you want to put your coat on light, but even. And get all your edges. And now we're going to let it dry, then we'll do the second coat once this is tacked. Now as you can see, it looks extra smooth. This is after one coat, and we give it 20 minutes uh, to tack up, and it's pretty well smooth to the touch now, so it's good enough to put another coat of clear coat on it. I'm going to do just two coats. I was going to do three, but two on the front should be enough. Now when applying some clear coats, if they're water-based, they will kind of have a whitish, you, you will see white in it from the water. And that's normal. As it evaporates out, it will smooth down. So don't try to get that white looking stuff out of your clear coat because you risk sagging it and it's supposed to be like that till it dries. Once it dries, that white will come actually out of it. So as always, shake your can up. And now this is going to be a little bit medium coat. And that's just so we can get it even on here and good coverage. And if you look on the side here, you can see that whiteness I was talking about. That's normal. Uh, you will see when I start the camera back. Once this is dried for about 30 minutes, that will be completely gone. That's just the clear coat, as this is an enamel, and it's just kind of a, probably a water-based material type enamel. So, that's, uh, yeah, that's normal. 
So it's been over an hour. Now you want to check and make sure you will not fingerprint this. But it's smooth to the touch. And I can actually try out right here. And I will not fingerprint. If you check to make sure, mash pressure on it in a spot that won't show. And if it don't leave a fingerprint, you're good to go. And you can notice all the white, the light from the cook coat is dried out. Now it's evaporated out like I told you. It looks really good. Now we are going to assemble these and check out the finished product. I did go ahead and do the other one as well. Looks just as good, just as smooth. So let's uh, assemble these. To install your lights again, you want to take your rubber pieces and go ahead and just mash them down in place. And uh, make sure your clear coat and everything is completely dry because you don't want it soft when you're mashing on it because you can smudge it. You know, and as you mash them down, they lock into place. Then we can flip it over, just like so, and do a tail light. You know, and if you took pictures, you know exactly which it goes. The red goes on this side, the orange goes here. So when we flip it, this needs to be the orange or yellow light. Depends on who you are and what state you're in. So putting this in is the same way it came out, just you got to press down on it as you go around this with a butter knife or a pick. And be careful, you want to take your time because depending on what you're using, you can tear the gasket or damage the new paint job you did. And you don't want to do that. So let's just take a time while gently pressing down, working around on it so it pops down. Just like so, and it will fit snug. Now let's take a look at it looks extremely good now let's do the other side too just like so now we were going to work around the edge just like we did before on the other one a pick tool would do awesome on this but it just depends what you got a worn way will work you just have to be careful this is just a butter knife it's not sharp so it won't cut anything so Let's look at it. It looks extremely good, a lot better than what we started with. And uh, I'm going to do the other side now. And I'll show you guys what they look like all done. So I showed you at the beginning of the video uh, one of these that was already done. And uh, they both are done. And they turned out great. And hopefully yours do too. And I showed you how to assemble them. But yeah, let's get a thumbnail, guys. What do you think, I guess? Or like this. Make your tail lights look new. Well, especially on your trailer or uh, car carrier. Uh, rollback, that's what these going on there. 350 Super Duty. Uh, thank you for watching. And I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I try to upload daily. I have been behind a couple of days, been extremely busy, but I get back on track. Uh, thank you for your support. Leave a comment if you enjoyed anything about this video. Uh, you know, subscribe. Thank you for the support. See you next time.